So the caramel milkshake. My favorite. Who got it for you? Louis. Just a couple of questions per person. All right. Sure am. What flavor? Salted caramel. All right, Noah. So you had one left in the season. You came out here. I mean, what was the importance, I think, of coming out to the Diamond League final, put, trying to put on a show for the fans? And how'd you feel? Felt great. You now, there's probably like one or two things I wanted to do before going to the race, but, you know, I, to be honest, I'm just here to have fun. You know, and I got my second fastest time of the year, so it shows that I still am in my peak condition. You know, my body is, I mean, I think we all know I do really good with rounds, but, you know, practicing, being able to go straight from the gun and be able to put out a time like that, I'm never going to be disappointed. And then somebody asked me what was the importance of coming out here. It's show my face, the crowd, you know, they like to see the world champion go around the world. And when the U.S. has it, you know, I got to come bring it back home. You said yesterday that this is like a victory lap. Mm -hmm. Does it still feel that way even after? Oh, you yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I went out there and I did my own victory lap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started with one. I started with one up signature and then went to a 10 and then went to 20. And then it was going so much. I had to stop giving signatures because they wanted me to go back on TV. So I had to just start high fiving people around the, uh, the whole track. But I was going to make it around. So. Even when I don't win, I win. <laughs> is this an end of the season celebration milkshake? Or is this your regular And milkshake? It was a gift milkshake. It's the end of the season gift milkshake. You know, Lewis Johnson got me this uh, as we were doing the NBC interview. So, yeah, it tastes pretty good too. After Zurich, you spoke about, before you decided you were going to come, you were saying like the broadcast, um, you know, might have added into your decision to come, right? Yeah. Did things kind of change. You feel like it's being well represented here in Prefontaine? Yes and no. It's still got some work to do, but there was a lot of things that I saw at this meet that I was very impressed with. Doing the walk-ins, having the billboard set up, having a changing room, you know, all ideas that I've been pushing to meets all across the, the globe this year. And I'm finally glad to see that somebody did it to uh, the standard that I feel like it should be. And now that everything's set up, all we got to do is keep doing it and make sure that the, you know, the athletes will be like, oh, this is the thing that's going to always happen. So they're ready to come in. You know, I was going to the press conference yesterday and I was like, yeah, this is how a press conference should look. You know, it, it was staged, the lighting was good. It wasn't just some, you know, random spot on a track in the back of a room that nobody knows, knows about. It's like filled with people, you know, even NBC or uh, ESPN showing up, you know, that's how it should be. And this hundred's about to go off. So I don't know if y'all want to watch that with me. <laughs> Who you got? Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think is gonna win the race? Shakiri. She hasn't lost to Sharika yet this year, so it's kind of hard because Sharika is always gonna be my number one. But you know, do you want to do some real time favorite. announcing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can't see it that well. Who's that? This just got a man. I tell you, Sharika coming. And there's Sharika. We got a time. Ten point six nine. There it is. Consistent. You knew it. Yeah. Well, no. Next year, you're going for the triple. Is that the goal again? Yep. It's always the goal. Always the goal. It's just the triple is hard because that four by one is oh so elusive. You know, you got to Make sure you get to the finals and then run again. So, you know, it's but the double is always going to be on the mind. Let's talk about your growth as a 100 meter runner this yeah. year. From where we were a year ago to even just like being yeah. here at the Diamond League final. And we spoke a year ago at this meet. You're just like, I'm here to spoil someone's party. Yeah. And then th today you come into the race and you're like, you're clearly one of the favorites for it as, yeah. a, as a world champion. So how did we get to this point? Perfect peaking. Perfect timing. You see the episode two yet? No, no, yeah. Oh, well, guess what? You're working, man. Guess what the episode's name is? What is it? Perfect timing. Everything clicked on the right moment. When other people say, "Oh, if I was just a week early, if I was just a week later, I'd be right," you know, that was some Christian was like, you know, it just timed it a little off. You know, me and my coach, we timed it perfectly. Can I say I think Christian beating it today is good for the sport in terms of just like it's building up storylines for next year. Yeah. I mean, do you feel similarly? No, I'm excited. Because it just shows that we're, there's like what, there's once, there's like four, there's three of us now with the season's uh, fastest time. And it's like, yo, like we all showed that we have the speed, but it also shows that you have to be the man on the day. And I was listening to some Cracker Jack, as my <laughs> agent said, he was like, oh, if Noah doesn't win at Prefontaine, you know, he doesn't deserve to be world number one. 
Oh, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Whoever got the title got the title. You gotta come take the belt. This is an exhibition, not a title fight. <laughs> Just curious, do you like the, um, I guess, parody, right, where Usain Bolt was dominating for so long. Now you have three guys who have the world lead, right, end of the season. Do you like that it's kind of wide open every kind of year now? I don't have a problem with it because it's just more competition. You know, when I first started the year or my career, the thing that I was so bored with was there was nobody to challenge me. And now, as I look around, I have people to challenge me, well, have people to think that they can challenge me in the 200 and then I'm now pushing the the pace in the two, in the 100. Now now everybody's like I can't get beat by the 200 guy and you know, now it's like shoot I'm the guy to beat now. <laughs> so for the Olympics will we see you doing both the 100 and 200? That's what I said down there. Yeah. <laughs> you said good.